Hi, I'm Kevin Sowers, and on behalf of the Duke Hospital team, we thank you for choosing us to take care of you and your loved ones. Each of our team members is here today to provide you with the very best Duke experience possible. And we know that you might have questions about your upcoming surgery. Our goal? Our goal is to provide you with the information you need to put you and your loved one's mind at ease. And it will help you with preparing for your surgery. And we'll provide directions to the facility where your surgical procedure will take place. We'll talk about the check-in and admissions process and we'll highlight the pre-op area, the post-anesthesia care unit or PACU, post-surgery admission and discharge, which is the process of leaving our hospital. When you walk through our doors, you become a part of the Duke tradition of excellence. Welcome to Duke University Hospital. Your surgery will be performed at either the Duke Ambulatory Surgery Center or the Hudson Building at Duke Eye Center. After your surgery is scheduled, you will have a pre-anesthesia testing telephone call or in-person appointment as preparation for your outpatient surgery. Pre-anesthesia testing is also referred to as PAT. If you're having your surgery at Duke Ambulatory Surgery Center, your pre-anesthesia appointment may take place over the phone or in person. Patients who have an in-person appointment will be seen at either Duke Clinic 2D or the Page Road Pre-Anesthesia Testing Clinic. If seen in Clinic 2D, you will park in the Duke Medicine Circle parking garage at 302 Trent Drive. This is the parking deck at the intersection of Trent Drive and Irwin Road. Take the parking deck elevator to the second floor. This will lead you to Duke Clinic through a climate-controlled indoor walkway. It's about a quarter of a mile walk, so you'll want to wear comfortable shoes. If your PAT clinic visit is scheduled at the Page Road Pre-Anesthesia Testing Clinic, you'll go to our state-of-the-art Duke Medical Plaza at 4709 Creekstone Drive, Suite 150 in Durham, located off of Page Road. Pre-anesthesia appointments for patients having outpatient surgery at the Hudson Building at Duke Eye Center will either take place over the phone or in person at the Eye Center. If being seen in person, the Hudson Building at Duke Eye Center has its own parking garage located at 2351 Irwin Road. There is no complimentary parking for any of the Duke Medicine parking lots, so be sure to have a debit card, credit card, or cash available to pay for parking. Take your parking ticket with you, and upon departure from the garage, pay it at one of the designated pay stations. If you want to avoid having to park your car and your appointment is at the Hudson Building at Duke Eye Center, you may use our valet services, found at the Eye Center's entrance, for a fee. The Page Road Pre-Anesthesia Testing Clinic and Ambulatory Surgical Center do not have valet parking. Good morning. Good morning, how are you doing today? Doing fine. My name is Jim Carners and I'm here for my pre-anesthesia appointment. May I see your driver's license and insurance card? Yes. Please be sure to bring your insurance card and a driver's license or a government-issued photo ID if you are visiting the clinic in person. You will also need to provide a list of your current medications, including dosages, at your visit in the clinic or on the telephone. If your ability to speak English is limited, Duke can provide a medical interpreter for you. The goal of your PAT appointment is for Duke medical providers to review your medical and surgical history and discuss any medications you're currently taking, including what to take and what not to take prior to surgery. If seen in person, a brief medical exam will be performed. You will also be given instructions specific to your surgery during this phone call or clinic visit and you can ask any questions or voice any concerns you may have about your upcoming surgery. Our goal is to make sure you understand what will be happening that day and ensure you're provided with the safest experience possible. Duke Concierge Services Department is a benefit available to all Duke patients free of charge. 
They can assist you with travel and transportation assistance, provide you with information on how to get around the hospital, help you with reduced rates for area accommodations, and suggest local attraction, shopping, and dining options. To speak with Duke Concierge Services, you may call 919-681-4947. As part of your preoperative process before surgery, you will receive a phone call the evening before your surgery from your surgeon's office or from staff who work in the location where you're having your surgery. During this call, you will receive your final arrival time and an estimated time of surgery. Please disregard any previous times you've been given as this phone call provides the most up-to-date information. To ensure that we're respectful of all of our patients' time, it's important to the surgical schedule that you arrive on time. During this phone call, we will confirm your location for surgery and you'll be asked for the contact information for the person who must accompany you. We will review which medications you can and cannot take the morning of your surgery and review any specific guidelines you need to follow that are unique to your surgical procedure. It's important that you listen carefully to any directions given and write them down, including when your last food and drink are allowed. And finally, during this conversation, we'll be sure you understand exactly where to check in for your particular surgery. Thanks for calling and asking my questions. I'll be there tomorrow at admissions desk at 7 a.m. with my wife. Before you leave home on the morning of your surgery, there are some things you need to know and remember to bring. Bring your current insurance card and photo ID. Wear comfortable, loose-fitted clothing. You'll be changing into a hospital gown. Bring a current list of medications, including supplements and vitamins. Remove contact lenses and bring glasses and a glasses case if you need them to read forms. Don't wear perfumes, powders, or deodorant on the day of surgery. Tie up or pull back long hair. Leave valuables like wedding rings and other jewelry and things like smart tablets at home. Only bring enough money for your copay and any parking fees. For your safety, please remove all piercings. Bring completed medical forms or medical records that need to be reviewed. Bring your CPAP machine or other equipment you routinely use or have been given for surgery. Bring something to read or do while you wait. Complimentary Wi-Fi is available. Bring a responsible adult 18 years of age or older. Remember, for the safety of our patients, Visitation may be restricted if a visitor has symptoms of illness or for specific age groups during certain times of the year, such as flu season. Be sure to allow plenty of time for traffic and parking on the day of your surgery. Remember, there is no parking validation at Duke. For the Ambulatory Surgery Center, you will enter into the parking deck at 2400 Pratt Street and follow it up to the fourth level. On level four, you'll see the glass door entrance to the Ambulatory Surgery Center. For the Hudson Building at Duke Eye Center, please use the Eye Center parking lot previously mentioned or valet parking. Remember, you will not receive a final time for your arrival or surgery until the day before your scheduled surgery. Upon your arrival, please check in at the registration desk. At the Ambulatory Surgical Center, enter through the glass doors from the fourth level of the parking garage. The admissions desk is right inside the doors where you'll be checked in for your surgery. At the Hudson Building at Duke Eye Center, you'll enter through the main doors. You'll need to take the elevators to the left to the third level. After exiting the elevators, take a left. There, you'll see the surgical registration desk. Hi. Hi. My name is Jim Carnes and I'm here for my surgery. Upon checking in, you'll be asked to verify your identity by stating your name and your birthday and showing a picture ID. After that, you'll receive an identification band. This is also where you'll need to provide your insurance information and pay your copay if required. If you have any questions about your bill, 
a financial counselor will be available to speak with you. Hospital staff is required to ask you whether you have an advanced directive, health care power of attorney, and living will. Please bring these with you if you have them. If you would like more information on these documents, please contact Patient Visitor Relations at 919-681-2020. Pastoral care, social workers, and interpreters are always available to assist and guide patients and families. You may choose to use your cell phone or you'll be given a pager so that you and your visitors can be updated and directed to the waiting area. Your visitors can stay with you until you are paged. Jim Connors? Yes. Hi, my name is David. Hi. I'm here to take you back for your surgery. Okay. Please give all your valuables to your visitor at this time. Visitors will have to wait in the surgical waiting area while you are being prepared for surgery. If the patient is a child, an adult may accompany them to the pre-op holding area. Surgical staff will communicate with your visitors by cell phone or pager as often as possible throughout the day. Although we will do everything possible to avoid delays in communication, please remember that there may be unavoidable delays due to the care of patient emergencies. You and your visitors are extremely important to us and we'll provide updates as frequently as we can. Once you're paged and called back to the pre-op holding area, you may give the pager to your visitors. With a cell phone or pager, your visitors can leave the waiting room for a short period of time but are asked not to leave the surgical center. The surgical staff tries to communicate frequently so your visitors will know how you're doing during your surgery. It's important that your visitors are easily reachable. If paged or called, visitors need to go to the registration desk. There are limited food options for visitors. Tell your visitors to ask someone at the admissions desk to direct them to available dining areas. The pre-op holding area may seem very busy. However, please don't hesitate to ask questions. Our goal is to provide excellent care and the best experience possible. You'll be asked to change into your hospital gown and will be given special socks to wear to keep you warm and prevent you from falling. You'll be asked to remove all undergarments. A nurse can provide an extra blanket for you if you get cold. Your clothes can be stored in a locker or given to your visitor. You'll also be given a red hat that must be worn until all safety checks have been completed shortly before your surgery. Hi, I'm Tracy. I'm your registered nurse. I'll be taking care of you today. Can I see your armband, please? Yeah. During your admission to the pre-op holding area, you'll be asked many of the same questions that you have been asked before, such as your identity, type of surgery, and the location of your surgery. This might be frustrating, but it's an important part of Duke's safety checks. We will update your medical history with any additional information, verify your medications, and ask you the last time you had anything to eat or drink, and other important details particular to your surgery. You'll receive a brief physical exam that includes taking your temperature and vital signs, which include a cardiac monitor that allows us to monitor your heart, a blood pressure cuff that will help us watch your blood pressure throughout the day, and a pulse oximeter that gives us information on how well you're breathing and how much oxygen is in your blood. Once these are complete and we've confirmed all of your information, we'll insert your IV, which is a plastic tube used to carry fluids and medications. This will help keep you hydrated and be used to administer medications. Our goal is to make this pre-op experience as painless and stress-free as possible. After your admission is complete, your visitor may stay with you until surgery, if you choose. While in the pre-op holding area, you'll have a chance to meet with your surgeon and members of the surgical team. They'll discuss your procedure and your surgical plan with you. Another safety check includes the surgeon writing his or her initials on the area where you're having surgery. Please feel free to ask any questions you may have while you're a guest at Duke. Once your questions have been answered, 
You'll then review and sign a surgical consent form if you haven't already done so, giving the surgeon permission to perform surgery. Anesthesia is a combination of medicines and techniques that make you comfortable and safe during your surgery. Sometimes this involves numbing up parts of your body or putting you to sleep for your surgery. Your anesthesiologist or a member of his or her team will come by to see you prior to your surgery to talk about available options for anesthesia and what would be the best for you and your specific surgery as well as go over what the recovery period from anesthesia will be like. When you feel comfortable that your questions have been answered, you'll review and sign a consent form allowing the anesthesia team to care for you during your surgery. Once all teams have spoken with you, two members of our staff will provide one last safety check, verifying your name, birth date, any allergies, and your surgical location. They'll then ensure your consent forms are signed and complete. Staff will also check to be certain that the surgeon has signed an updated history and physical information sheet on the day of surgery. Once all of this is completed, your red hat will be changed to a blue hat and you'll be ready for surgery. Okay, we're ready to go to surgery, Mrs. Connor. We're gonna take care of it. Thank you. I'll see you when you get out. Okay. Remember, your visitors will have their cell phone or a pager to receive updates during your surgery. Once the surgery is finished, the surgeon will speak to your visitors about how the procedure went. The surgeon may or may not speak directly to you in the recovery area, since you may be very groggy from the anesthesia and unable to remember the conversation. Therefore, encourage your visitors to ask any questions they may have. Your visitors must wait to see you until you're in the post-anesthesia care unit, otherwise known as the PACU, or in your assigned room and settled on the floor where you'll be until discharged. When your surgery is over, your anesthesia team will take you to the PACU so you can begin to recover. Time in the PACU may vary for each patient depending upon the length and type of surgical procedure as well as the type of anesthesia used during the surgery. You may or may not remember some of what happens in the PACU due to being fuzzy and groggy from the effects of the anesthesia. Mr. Connor, the surgery's over and everything went well. The anesthesia team will assist the PACU nurses with getting you settled into the PACU. Anesthesia will give a full report of your surgery to the PACU nurse. The PACU nurse will then take over your care, including closely monitoring your breathing, heart rate, blood pressure, and the amount of oxygen in your blood. Your visitors will need to wait to see you until you're settled in the PACU, where you'll be until you're discharged. While you're in the PACU, we'll question you about your level of pain and work hard to make sure that you're as comfortable as possible. Mr. Connors, can you rate your pain on a scale of one to 10, with one being the least about pain and 10 being the worst? The PACU nurse will also watch you carefully and give you treatment or medications as needed and be sure you're comfortable and drinking without nausea or vomiting. Once the doctor feels that you are stable and in good condition to go home, you'll be discharged. Care team members will give your discharge instructions either verbally or by watching a video. You'll also be given written instructions to take home. This is called an after visit summary or AVS. It will include instructions on medications, bandages, diet, activity, equipment, and other important instructions and references specific to your surgery. You'll also find important phone numbers on the AVS should you need to reach hospital staff after you leave the hospital. We'll also remove your monitors and IV. This is a great opportunity for you or your caregiver to ask any questions you may have about your recovery at home. It's helpful for your caregiver to have a pen and paper with them at discharge so they can take notes regarding your care. Uh, when would I be able to shower and change my bandages? I 
you can shower as early as tomorrow, but no tub baths for two weeks. And leave your bandages on until you go to physical therapy. All right, and when will I be able to take my pain medication again? You can take another dose of pain medicine at 7 p.m. That's if you need it, okay? Now, do you understand all the other instructions? Yeah. Okay, good. We're good to go then. Thank you. Your visitor will need to pick you up at the same place where you entered. Someone from the hospital care team will help you to the discharge area and assist your transfer to the car for the ride home. You'll receive a follow-up call from our nursing staff within 24 hours after you're discharged from the hospital to see how you're recovering. Remember to have any questions you may have ready so that we can help you with those questions when we call to check on you. We know that coming to the hospital can feel overwhelming. But just remember that every member of our team is here for you and your loved ones. Your health and healing are important to us. So if during your stay you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask a member of your care team. It's not only okay to ask questions, it's encouraged. Again, thank you for choosing Duke University Hospital for your healthcare needs.